Yeah, many of the videos in this playlist take on a certain tone. I'm very aware of that. I think you all know what I'm talking about. I'm critical for a reason though. I don't want you to be ripped off or scammed. And I understand there's an entertainment factor as well. I'm not gonna ignore that, but there is still a factual, informative factor that I don't want people to overlook just because they see me hating on a particular ad or business practice. And while we're being frank, I also don't like it when sellers profit off of misleading statements and or stupid combinations of hardware. Tends to be quite a bit of that as of late. So when a viewer reached out and asked for help selling his used PC, I figured it'd actually be a nice change of pace for this playlist. Let's help him set up a PC ad for success. Stay with me. If you're upset about that inconsiderate Windows activation watermark plaguing your screen, snag an OEM license. SCD key makes it simple. You have one in a few seconds for a little over $10, paste your activation key, and you can kiss that watermark goodbye. And be sure to use my new offer code GSL for a 12% discount on your order. So this viewer here, who we'll refer to as BT, has a gaming PC currently listed for 850 bucks. His title reads, Gaming PC i7-6700 EVGA GTX 1070 computer. That's it. When I used flip PCs back in the day, my titles were actually kind of similar. I'd reference primary specs, the things people really wanted to look out for, like the graphics card and the CPU, but I would still change a few things. For one, you've already said PC, so also including the word computer just kind of adds clutter and redundancy. You want to add important facts that don't repeat themselves in the title because that's what people will read. Capitalize the C in PC, take out the EVJ I mentioned, and include the acronyms ITX and RGB. Those are pretty relevant for this build. I know it sounds cheesy, but trust me, RGB is a huge selling point. Up next, we've got several pictures. This first one's actually pretty great. It shows viewers that you do, in fact, have RGB components set up and synced with a remote. This is, for some reason, a huge selling point. I feel like people who just aren't familiar with the PC industry think this is like the, the next sliced bread, but we all know it's pretty common and actually pretty cheap now. Whatever, it sells PCs, so show it. I mean, if we're trying to rationalize things, consoles really can't do this unless you do some serious modifications, but the PC is very simple and straightforward, so I guess it adds a bit of customizability. I hate to admit that in 2020, but yeah. The next photo reveals, uh, yeah, it's just a tad more of the system, mainly a bit more of the front of the case, but I'd prefer a different angle than this one altogether. It's just, uh, it's kind of redundant, maybe one from straight ahead. This one's, it's not revealing enough unique information about the build itself to justify its existence, especially when seeing the context of the first photo. Now the next photo is the same. Sure, the side panel is on at this point, but the camera angle just, it really doesn't suggest that it's the subject, right? We do have that front facing photo. This one's fine, though I'd pull back just a bit. This shot from the side is great. It reveals most of the PC's internals. This shot is uh, completely redundant apart from the color change. Same here, completely redundant. This one is fine, this one's redundant, and this one's redundant. So to summarize the photos, about half of them are great and should remain in the ad. The other half should be replaced altogether with more unique angles, maybe some up close shots and more stylistic portraits, if you will. Here are a few examples I took of a recent build. You can see how I'm a bit further away from my subject and I took photos from multiple angles as well as some up close shots just to show the tech porn in a better light. I also just used my cell phone. You don't need a professional DSLR, mirrorless camera, or anything like that. Think of it like selling a car. You wanna make sure that you cover all the important details. No one's gonna judge you on what camera you're using unless it's completely out of focus, blown out. Like don't take an out of focus photo of your odometer so that your mileage is indistinguishable. I mean, come on, let's be honest here. You can even show the cable managed right side of the case if you're feeling super confident, which I suppose would be equivalent to maybe like taking a picture under the hood. Most people don't tend to clean their engine bays, so. Yeah, I guess that works. Now, let's discuss the parts. We've got a Core i7, 6700. That's four cores, hyper-threading from the OG Skylake days. These sell frequently on eBay for around 200 USD, so we'll assume as much here. The CPU cooler is a small Noctua NH U9S, which goes for around 30 bucks used. Next is a B250 ITX motherboard from MSI, which I'll be frank, couldn't find specifically in the used market, but these older ITX boards in general tend to hold their value a bit better than traditional ATX, so let's say something like 60 to 80 bucks. I think it's an overestimation, but let's roll with it for now. You can find 16 gigs of SniperX DDR4 for around 50 bucks. The storage here, a 256 gig SATA SSD and a one terabyte WD blue hard drive go for around 80 bucks in total. I recommend buying storage new versus used for reasons I've discussed in previous videos. Just trust me on that. Next up, GTX 1070 from EVGA. These are still worth around $200 in the used market. This ITX case from Fantex is definitely a bit dated. I've built in this exact chassis on the channel a few years ago. I think in this video here, I, I apologize, it's kind of cringy. 
The case is nice, but the acrylic side panel reveals its true age. I mean, how many cases in 2020 that are around 80 to 100 bucks MSRP are sporting acrylic? And I mean, let's be real, for an ITX system, this is a pretty beefy case. I'd say no more than around 40 bucks used for it. The PSU is a LIPA Max Braun 800 watt. This system would run just fine though on a 500 watt unit, so... Yeah, let's look for one of those, around 50 bucks or so, even some higher wattage sketchier units if you're into that kind of thing. He lists some games, but I'm not gonna include them in the price because you're buying the PC. Yeah, I, I don't know why he bothered. So if we total these components up, we arrive at around 700 USD, maybe just a bit over that, depending on where you source your pricing data. For me, it's almost exclusively eBay for used parts, maybe Amazon and Newegg for the new stuff. eBay's buyer protection guarantee is fairly strong, so I tend to stick there. However, if you'll note, the seller is asking for 850 bucks. Like he's not far off the mark, certainly not a candidate for a grilling on this channel or in this playlist in particular, but I would consider this a bit high, especially for slightly dated hardware. For the same asking price, I could build a very capable Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7 system with a similar graphics card. And that's where I think the root of the problem is here. The seller probably isn't selling this system, not because he's drastically overpriced it, but because he's having to compete with newer Ryzen processors that are undercutting his Skylake chip from both price and performance perspectives. And remember, the Core i7 isn't even unlocked. Ask yourself, which would you rather have in your system for 800 bucks? A used four core i7 from five years ago? That's right, Skylake is that old. Or a six core Ryzen 5 2600? I mean, I could actually build you one of those systems for less than this asking price. Heck, even an eight core 16 thread Ryzen 7 2700 is selling for less as a new chip than this used 6700. That's how just that's how big of a sucker punch Ryzen was to Intel. And that's a good thing, I guess. So the inevitable. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this this system's just overpriced. It's not drastically overpriced, but it is higher than what I would list it for, considering the components inside of it. So unless you are willing to part out individual components, which can be costly and time consuming if done through eBay. I don't recommend it. I've done it before and it kind of sucks because it just, it's, there's a lot of logistics involved and it takes time procuring the boxes and packaging it all up and then dropping them off individually when they happen to sell because they're not gonna sell all at one time. I recommend, yeah, you drop the price just a bit or maybe change a few things about the build to make it a bit more desirable. So I believe your best bet would be to start actually at around $700, basically what it would cost you to build this in the used market and consider taking slightly less if an offer presents itself, especially if you're, really struggling to sell it. At the end of the day, you should feel content selling your system at cost, but you'll hopefully have a few offers entertained because as the seller informed me, he hasn't gotten anything in a few weeks, not even a few bites since it's been posted. So that kind of sucks, it's disheartening. I'm glad he reached out. Hopefully these tips will help him. Continuing on with the remainder of the ad's description though, he says, no scratches or damaged hardware and the whole system runs very cool with a CPU cooler, extra fans and 240 millimeter in the front. The computer has never been overclocked and only lightly gamed on. All RGB is adjustable using a remote. Will trade for a better PC with cash on my side. So this chunk of words I would also consider rewriting. Instead of saying no scratches or damaged hardware, I'd say something like, system is in excellent condition, no issues whatsoever. It's concise yet broad. Say something like system runs cool and quiet. Take out the part about the system having never been overclocked and only lightly gamed on. This comes across kind of like, like if you're trying to sell a sports car, like car has never been launched and only lightly tracked. Like, look, it's a gaming PC. You gamed on it. That's probably what you built it for. You gamed on it just like everyone else did with his or her hardware. I think this inclusion just sounds as though you're trying to pass it off as a delicate machine when it should just be presented as a solid rig with some unique traits that works, okay? It works. You can test it, whatever. You could probably mention that in the ad. That's what people largely care about. Of course, this is just my opinion from experience. You may still feel the need to include these things. I've just never really had any luck by stating that a system was never overclocked. Nobody has ever asked me about that. No one I've come across really cares because let's be honest, how many CPUs do you know just randomly die? I've said this in multiple videos, but most of the time it's something else like the power supply, maybe a fan on the graphics card or CPU cooler. You get the point. So a quick recap then. Change a few of the pictures to present unique angles and close-ups. Simplify the description just a bit. Swap some words in the title of the ad and adjust the price to around $700. I'd say maybe $750 at the most, but chances are it's the price itself based on the components that you listed that's putting off a lot of potential 
bites at least. And I mean, look, ultimately you could just sit on the $850 asking price and hope that the other changes work to sell the ad. But if you're just looking to move on and cut losses without taking too big of a hit, I think 700 is a pretty fair starting price at least. Uh, heck, I mean, even at 850, it's not a bad place to start technically, but you need to ask yourself whether or not waiting for someone to be hooked is worth the extra $100 or so that you may scrape from the bottom of the barrel. The way I've always approached these sales is speedy and fast turnover. For a build like this a few years ago, I try to make maybe around a 10% profit in a $500 build that'd be, what, about 50 bucks, and a $1,000 build, maybe $100 at the most. I was never patient enough to wait several weeks for one desperate buyer in need of a system ASAP to pay three, $400 markup. I, I wouldn't even try to do that just because I, I do think that that's a bit dishonest anyway. So yes, it's subjective. Do what you feel is comfortable. I don't think you're ripping anyone off even at the $850 price, but there are certainly a few things I would change to help push this sale a little faster. I will follow up by the way in the comment section with an update from the seller if I get a chance. But for now, I hope you've learned something and uh, yeah, I can turn this constructive criticism into an actual sale in the near future. Now, if you all like this one, click that thumbs up button. I appreciate that. Consider subscribing if you haven't already and I will catch you in the next one. My name's Greg, thanks for learning with me.